Stories are the most powerful things we possess. They transcend death. What better way than to spend your holiday season wrapped in the creepy arms of Jeffrey Coombs? We are talking about the horror Christmas anthology, Holiday Hell. Uh, this one is an anthology movie with obviously multiple directors, uh, but it is written by Jeff Farrell and Jeff uh, Vigil. So this has a wraparound story that involves Jeffrey Coombs, and he is a shopkeeper of a curio shop and just the, the, the night before Christmas Eve he gets his last customer in of the day and there is this woman looking for a gift for her sister and essentially the stories are essentially the Jeffrey Coombs telling the customer about particular items within the shop and uh, there is three kind of stories that he tells and then the, 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 this customer tells Jeffrey Coombs a story so we essentially have this wraparound story and then plus four actual sort of stories themselves. The final story does kind of link into the wraparound story. So we're just kind of touch briefly on each of the four stories and kind of what my thoughts are on them then we'll talk about in kind of uh, in general. So the first story um, essentially is a kind of a slasher style movie and it has to be fair very little to do with Christmas. It really focuses on this kind of group of teenagers as they are going to this uh, air quotes abandoned house uh, to party and, you know, drink and have sex as teenagers going to do and these things. However, it's not quite a bad There is this uh, girl there who is wear wears this kind of creepy looking mask and who ultimately uh, wants to kill them for kind of trespassing. This one is more or less a standard, albeit short, slasher movie. Um, a few things to kind of point out with this one. Uh, on the plus side, the actual doll mask looks really cool and particularly creepy. And it's kind of nice to see a kind of a female slasher. And there are, there's a, despite it being a, a, just a short film, it's a relatively high kind of body count. There's some kind of fun deaths within this movie itself. On the, on the downside, the story's nothing new. It's just a very much a quick slasher. There's no kind of like cleverness to this kind of plot. It does attempt to have a, a little bit of a twist, but there's always that, that sort of thing with an anthology movie, you kind of know it's coming. Um, but the thing that bugged me a little bit about this movie is the set dressing here, because this does not look like a, a, a haunted, like an abandoned house at all. It literally looks like someone's house, fully furnished, complete with stereos and stuff like that, that would have been nicked if it was an abandoned house. Think, so it just looks a little cheap. It looks like they basically filmed it in someone's house and go, oh yeah, it's abandoned. And there's no attempt to kind of make it look abandoned whatsoever. So it kind of comes across as, um, you know, just a very quickly made uh, kind of slasher flick. The second one is a little better, I feel, and this is a kind of a haunted doll movie. Now this actually has a Jewish spin. Uh, we get this kind of, uh, this Jewish couple who are going away for business for a few days. So their young son, they give this particular kind of, like this, this wooden handmade doll, which was made by a rabbi in Germany somewhere, and it's kind of, you know, very old, etc. And uh, they, they, they hire this, this young girl as a babysitter to look after the kid uh, while they're away. But this young babysitter has ideas about robbing them and kind of wants to get her boyfriends there to, uh, to try and obviously clean the place out. And it's up to this kid and this now um, golem, essentially, this small golem to uh, defend the, kind of the home against these uh, would-be um, robbers. So that was quite good. I've got to say, it's very low budget. It all takes place in kind of one location. The doll itself does look very creepy. They do do some kind of like um, very you know low tech ways of kind of making the, the doll move, but don't be expected to see it running around and stuff like that. The thing that bugged me about this movie, although I think the actual premise is quite fun and the doll itself looks quite neat, the acting is so poor in this segment. Uh, everyone massively overacts here, and they, it's, it's just has no believability whatsoever. And, um, yeah, it just it doesn't look particularly good in, in regards to that, unfortunately. The third story, which I actually think is the strongest, in my opinion, although the fourth one's good as well, is um, 
we have this guy who is uh, kind of having a middle middle age crisis. You know, he's he's overweight. He's kind of stuck in a job where he's getting passed over for promotion. His wife kind of is losing interest in him and kind of having an affair with the guy that she, he, he got. Um, he, you know, he lost the job out to things like this. So he he is kind of feeling under pressure, and he works for a pharmaceutical company, and uh, he's kind of had a bit of an alcohol problem. And uh, one night he kind of dresses up as the kind of the company Santa Claus and sort of finds out his wife is ultimately having an affair and snaps. And he, not only is he kind of having this mental breakdown, he's having, you know, he's drunk, plus he's taken these, these kind of experimental brand new drugs, which causes him to go on a murderous rampage. And then he basically turns into Arnold Schwarzenegger from uh, Batman and Robin, who, who is essentially just every line he says is just like a, some pun-filled uh, Christmas joke or something like that. And even the way he, you know, kills people... Like there's a girl who's doing, you know, shagging this guy. And she's got, you know, she's topless, and he kills her with a hoe, for example. And obviously, she's meant to be, she's a hoe, etc. So uh, that was actually quite fun, and actually fairly poignant because obviously these kind of uh, mass killings and these kind of people snapping, certainly in the states, is something which happens all too often, unfortunately. And although this isn't gun violence, essentially, it's someone kind of breaking down and having this mental breakdown and then killing their co-workers. So it's chillingly close to kind of things that kind of happen in real life. And I've got to say, I feel the, the performances are good in this one. The, the actual our, our kind of our guy who's having this break, you kind of feel for him. And, you know, even even his wife, you understand slightly where she's kind of coming from. And uh, they don't seem to have a terrible relationship. It's not like they're, they're two kind of like uh, people who are massively cartoon characters which I, which is I feel like they were in the first sorry the second segment with the killer doll they, they actually seem like real fleshed out people who you know have some serious problems but they don't seem unrealistic so I thought this was um, my favorite out of the kind of the uh, the actual um, segments itself and certainly I feel the most in regards to the poignancy because of obviously obviously it's real life parallels I mean, the kills are a little bit cheap, admittedly, but I actually thought this was a pretty decent segment. And then the final one, which I think is probably the biggest in scope, and uh, is also a pretty good segment, is kind of a, a Wicker Man uh, story where we have this young girl who uh, moves to this kind of rural town to kind of get away from bad memories from, from her home life. And there she, uh, you know, rents a room from this strange sort of couple. And this little town seems to be a little weird. Everyone's kind of wearing this kind of same ring. And there may be uh, some kind of like pagan kind of shenanigans kind of going on. If you've seen The Wicker Man, it'll probably give you an idea about where that kind of that short is going to go. Uh, and then we have obviously our wraparound story itself. And I've got to say, I thought Jeffrey Coombs was fantastic in this. He's such a fun actor and such a kind of a beloved uh, horror icon, I think, and he really is, um, even though he doesn't have a huge amount to do in the actual wraparound story, I thought he was actually quite fun as this kind of cranky shopkeeper who gradually kind of is becoming more kind of interested in this kind of customer and stuff like that, and then we have that kind of the, the conclusion to that story, which I also thought was actually fairly, fairly kind of good uh, as well. I mean, the, the shop doesn't look great in regards to its set design, to be honest, it looks like a set, but, you know, there you go. So overall, this is a, a fun, um, kind of, a fairly kind of variety field. There's quite a lot of different kind of types of story here. So I feel this anthology does actually do a good job in having, giving some kind of variety. And also some, uh, the, because there's only four stories, they are of reasonable length. So you do get a little bit of kind of character design and you get a kind of, you know, an arc to the story which I think is a little bit better so maybe than the ones that have really short, a lot more vignettes, um, that you can never, never really get any kind of character build up in. So I've got to say, although I do have some problems that I've mentioned, and the, the, the general cheapness of this production may put some people off, I do think there's certainly some to enjoy here, particularly kind of from the last two stories, and the wraparound story itself, I feel, is, is quite fun, purely because of uh, Jeffrey Coombs' kooky performance, uh, which absolutely carries that kind of segment. So I want to give this one an above-average mark, 6 out of 10. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment, and I shall look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.